Welcome to God's Playbook, the podcast that knocks the hard-hitting religious questions out of the park or catching the Holy Spirit right at the end zone. Train your soul and be God's MVP with your host, Father Rico Passero. It's a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! This is God's Playbook. Let's play ball. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Welcome back to God's Playbook, friends. I'm Father Rico. Today we're going to talk about the church's liturgical year, or the church year. With Sundays at the middle and the center, the church follows a pattern of seasons. Just as the world thinks of the year broken up into spring, summer, fall, and winter, The church calendar includes feast days, holy days, and special saint days. The colors, the symbols, and the themes all have deep meaning, and I hope to help us to understand those meanings today. Christians long to retrace the steps of Jesus and walk with him in the life of each of us here on earth. The gospel writers did it, and anyone who has made a pilgrimage to the Holy Land or other holy places have also done it. And so as we recognize that the church year over the course of the year, as the catechism says, it unfolds the whole mystery of Christ. So throughout the year, Holy Mother Church gives us an opportunity to break up the year in special seasons and liturgical times to help us to recognize the life of Jesus and the presence of God in our daily life. So, like a natural year, the church year follows a certain pattern. It is called the liturgical year. And the church year celebrates and relives the great events of our salvation. Each year follows a pattern, and our prayers and readings for Mass guide us in those celebrations. So, the church year begins the first Sunday of Advent. During Advent, in which we celebrate for four weeks, We share in the Israelites' long wait for the Messiah to come and enter into an expectation and anticipation for the coming of our Messiah. The season begins the fourth Sunday before Christmas. So every year, the first Sunday of Advent changes. So the liturgical year doesn't fall like on our calendar year, every year January 1st. The church year moves every single year depending on the fourth Sunday before Christmas. The season of Advent, the church uses many rich symbols to which you may recall. We wear purple. Purple is the color of royalty. We recognize that Jesus is our King. We also have the symbol of the Advent wreath, that round wreath with the four candles inside, symbolizing that the love of God has no beginning and no end. Each of the four candles have a particular color. Three of them are purple, one of them pink. The four candles are representative of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four evangelists who teach us of the life of Jesus. The purple candles, the expectation that the king is coming, the pink candle is the candle of joy. And so with joyful anticipation of waiting and hope with Mary for the birth of Jesus, We are encouraged in the Advent season to avoid rushing into Christmas. Advent lasts for four weeks. In addition to preparing our hearts for the celebration of the birth of Jesus, we also prepare for the Lord's second coming and the fullness of the kingdom that is to come. We examine our lives and celebrate the sacrament of penance and reconciliation. So again, the liturgical color is purple or violet, for royalty, humility, and hope. We also use Advent calendars to help families count down to Christmas. An Advent wreath made of evergreen holds the candles to help us to understand that each candle is lit on the Sunday of each week. So week one, purple candle is lit. Week two, a second purple candle lit. Week three, the pink candle is lit. And week four, the purple candle is lit. This is the season of Advent, a time of great anticipation and hope. Following the season of Advent is the season of Christmas. The Christmas season marks the birth of Jesus 
It lasts from Christmas Day until the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord in early January. Again, the Christmas season fluctuates based on when the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord falls. There are also many special celebrations during the Christmas season. Just like the song says, the 12 days of Christmas, Christmas is not just a day, rather it's for a season. And so we are to celebrate and our Christmas decorations should really only go out towards the end of the Advent season to remind us of the joy of the Messiah. When should Christmas decorations be taken down, Father Rico? At the end of the Christmas season with the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. When you walk into the church, the Advent wreath is taken away for Advent has ended and the season draws us to the color white or the color gold. And these colors help to signify the light of Christ, the innocence of Jesus, and the joy that we receive for the Messiah has been born to us. Many Catholics leave up their Christmas tree and continue to display their nativity scenes and sing Christmas carols and hymns long after the rest of the world has set them aside. So I invite that tradition, if it is not already your tradition, friends, to echo in your family traditions as well. For indeed, the Lord has come. And so we don't just celebrate for a day, but rather for the entire season. Following the season of Christmas, we enter into what's called ordinary time. Ordinary time follows Christmas season for several weeks. It's reflecting on the mystery of Christ's life and the growing as a church. The color for this season is green. Green for growth and green for eternal life. This time period takes place for many weeks that lead us into the season of Lent. Ordinary time is not meant to say that it's just blah blah, but ordinary suggests that God continues to walk with us through our everyday life. So the presence of God is still celebrated even outside the high parts of our liturgical year. Lent follows ordinary time as a season of penance, and it lasts for 40 days, beginning from Ash Wednesday and ends at the start of the Easter Triduum, which is Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter. During Lent, Catholics prepare themselves for these days of Lent, which are the holiest days of the year. Anticipation of our renewal of our baptismal promises and also when we receive new members into the Catholic Church on Holy Saturday at the Easter Vigil. Catholics are called to fast, pray, and give alms, and to celebrate the sacrament of penance. The final week of Lent is called Holy Week, which begins on Palm Sunday, when we recount Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, and that his suffering and death and resurrection are to follow. The color for Lent is purple, and the color signifies penitence, sorrow, and repentance for sin. The Triduum, which is Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and the Easter Vigil on Saturday, is Latin for three days. Though chronologically three days, they are liturgically one day unfolding for us the unity of Christ's presence in the Paschal mystery, which means the dying and rising of Jesus. The single celebration of the Triduum marks the end of the Lenten season and leads us to the Mass of the Resurrection of the Lord. The liturgical colors during the Triduum celebrations change depending on the day. On Holy Thursday, the color is white. On Good Friday, the color is red. On Holy Saturday and Easter Sunday, the color is once again white. On Holy Thursday, white is used to symbolize the holiness that we receive and attain when we serve God and one another. White also is in remembrance of the holiness that we receive as we celebrate the Last Supper 
in which Jesus institutes the Eucharist for us as we feast on his body and blood. Good Friday, red is to signify the blood that Jesus poured out for us by his dying on the cross. Holy Saturday, the color returns to white as we give honor and praise to God for the gift of resurrection. Jesus is alive. And so, because of his resurrection, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so white is the color of Easter. When we hear Paschal mystery, once again, friends, it refers to the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus, which has brought salvation to all of us. So, people say, oh, I know how to party. Well, no one knows how to party like the church, because we don't just celebrate the resurrection of Jesus' friends on one day but rather the Easter season is celebrated for 50 days. That's right, 5050. So during this Easter season, as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus and his victory over sin and death, this is the most important time of the year. Unlike the Christmas hymn, Christmas is the second most important time of the year. Easter is so important that we can't just celebrate it for a day or a couple of weeks. Rather, we celebrate 50 days, a week of weeks from Easter Sunday through Pentecost Sunday. And Easter fluctuates year to year. It can be as early as the end of March or as late into the month of April. Every year, the Easter season changes from its start and end point, but the length of time of the Easter season always remains 50 days. Throughout the season of Easter, the liturgical color is white. White symbolizing the resurrection, Jesus the light of the world, victory over triumph and death, and the glory of God. St. Augustine says, We are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. And so we sing Alleluia as we give praise to God throughout the Easter season. Following the Feast of Pentecost, Ordinary time resumes once again. And ordinary time runs from following Pentecost Sunday all the way to the last Sunday of the church year, just before Advent begins. And this feast is called the Feast of Christ the King. Ordinary time is once again a time for us to reflect on the mystery of Christ's life and as we grow as a church. Again, the liturgical color for ordinary time is green as it focuses on our spiritual growth and eternal life as well. When we look at the importance of the week, every week the most important day is Sunday. We call Sunday the Lord's Day. St. Jerome speaks of the Lord's Day in this way. The Lord's Day, the day of resurrection, the day of Christians, is our day. It is called the Lord's Day because on it the Lord rose victorious to the Father. If pagans call it the day of the Son, we willingly agree. For today the light of the world is raised. Today is revealed the Son of Justice with healing in his rays. And so, friends, the Lord's Day should be different from Monday to Saturday. Sundays are the day that we are to give special honor and praise to God and is central to our life. The observance of Sunday begins with Saturday evening, to which some people wish to attend Mass at what's called the Vigil Mass on Saturday evenings. However, the Vigil Mass is created primarily for those who are unable to attend Mass on Sunday proper. So if that's you, I highly encourage you to continue to resume attending Mass on Sundays. For those who work and are unable to attend, then Saturday evening is also permissible. Catholics are obligated to participate in Mass every single weekend as we give honor and praise to God. We hear in the Catechism, there the Lord's Supper is its center. For there the whole community of the faithful encounter the risen Lord who invites them to his banquet. And so the church says that we are to worship God at Mass, which is so vital to our spiritual and sacramental life. But the church also encourages us to treat Sunday as a day of rest and recreation, to spend family time 
and to keep the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days, God says, you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a day of Sabbath for the Lord your God. Let's find new ways to create an opportunity of grace, special times of prayer as we pray as a family, both at Mass and at home, using Sunday as our day of honoring God in a special way. Throughout the liturgical year, friends, there are what's called Holy Days of Obligation. Now in Canada, the Holy Days of Obligation are different from other parts of the world. Here in Canada, we only have a few days of obligation. The first day is Christmas Day. We are obliged to go to Mass every Sunday. However, Christmas falls sometimes on a Sunday. Sometimes Christmas falls on a separate day. And so we are obliged to go to Mass and worship God on Christmas Day. We also celebrate on January the 1st, the Solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God. As the world brings in a new calendar year, we as church have already begun at the beginning of Advent, our liturgical year. And so we celebrate this feast day as a holy day of obligation. And so we are obligated in Canada to go to Mass every Sunday through the year, as well as on Christmas Day and the Feast of Mary, the Holy Mother of God. In other parts of the world, they have other days of obligation. And depending on where you live, it's important that as the phrase says, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, that we should ensure that no matter where we live, that we follow these holy days of obligation. Some of the days are attributed to feasts like the Ascension of the Lord, which in places like the United States and other parts of the world is celebrated on a Thursday. We're here in Canada. The bishops have moved the Feast of the Ascension to fall on the closest Sunday. There are other days which are attributed to the saints. I think of the Assumption of Mary on August the 15th or the Immaculate Conception on December the 8th. In Canada, these are not holy days of obligation where we must attend Mass, but I highly encourage us as we develop our faith life to attend such days. We also have a special day called All Saints Day, which we celebrate on November the 1st, where we give honor and praise to God for these Catholic role models who've helped us on our journey to sainthood. They give us an example Though not perfect, they, like us, are sinners, but made choices that were pleasing to God and lived lives that are holy. And so we connect as communion of saints, as we connect with those in heaven, those here on earth, and those in purgatory as we await the kingdom. On November the 2nd, the church celebrates All Souls Day. All Souls Day is when we pray for those who have died and await the kingdom that are marked with the sign of faith that through the mercy and love of our God, that one day they too will enter into the heavenly realm. And so it is important that we spend that day also in prayer for them. Throughout the rest of the year, which is almost every single day, there is a saint that is given to us to celebrate and to thank God for the gift of these men and women who have worked hard at attributing holiness in their life, to inspire us to do the same. I encourage you on your birthday to find out which saint is attributed to that day. My birthday is October the 28th, which happens to fall on the feast day of two apostles, St. Simon and Jude. And so I ask St. Simon and Jude to help me in my desire to lead a holy life as well. If you don't already know, friends, I invite you to look up on your birthday to find out when there might be a saint that can help you to grow in holiness too. There are other great days of celebration throughout the year that are sprinkled and moved depending on the year. The Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, which is celebrated in the month of June, this feast and the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary 
take place and are moved depending on the liturgical year. There are also many other celebrations to which if you have the opportunity to attend daily mass, you will see that the church uses wonderful opportunities to help us to grow in God's image and likeness. We also find that there are three liturgical years, which we call year A, year B, and year C. Through each liturgical year, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke are proclaimed to us on Sundays, where St. John's Gospel is sprinkled through. Year A, we celebrate St. Matthew's Gospel. Year B, we celebrate St. Mark's Gospel. Year C, we celebrate St. Luke's Gospel. And as I mentioned on the High Holy Days, St. John's Gospel is sprinkled through. If you were to go to daily Mass, the readings and church year are broken into year one and year two. And if you were to attend Mass every day for three consecutive years, you would hear almost the entire scripture proclaimed to you. Sometimes these scriptures are repeated. And so it's a beautiful opportunity for those who are able to grow in their relationship with God by attending Mass not only on Sundays, but every day. I encourage you to make it a habit to see if you can attend Mass in addition to Sunday Mass at least one other time during the week. Find out from your local parish to see when their daily Mass schedule is to allow you to receive Jesus in Holy Communion on a regular basis, as well as to participate in some of the other minor feast days that the church offers throughout the year. And so friends, we see the beauty of the liturgical year. How many solemnities and special feast days help us to reflect upon God's presence in our midst. And so as we give honor and praise to God for being so present in our life, we do so with joy for every day is a day of blessing from God. Every month has been blessed by God. Every year has been blessed by our Lord. Lord, we thank you for the gift of each day. Help us through the liturgical calendar to grow in our relationship with you. For God's Playbook, I'm Father Rico. God loves you and so do I. If you like what you hear, Please consider supporting us on our Ko-Fi, K-O-F-I, or GoFundMe at God's Playbook Podcast. Thanks, and God bless.